Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at CSS free box shadows. So we're going to apply shadows to all three of these images and to the title. And uh, we're going to use just CSS, there's no images being used at all. It's part of the new CSS free lineup. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is come to my website to download the tutorial files. And while you're there, you can sign up for my newsletter. If you go below the screen, you can click on the button for download Dreamweaver tutorial files. And that will be a zip file and you can open it up and there will be the finished version of the files and the starting version of the files. So once you've downloaded it, you need to install it into Dreamweaver by going to site and to new site. And then you can go onto the advanced tab and uh, you can give it a site name. I'm going to give mine CSS free. That's my site name. And you just need to tell it where the root folder is and where the default images folder and the Dreamweaver will do the rest for you. In the download, I might also include a video or some sort of instruction showing you how to install it in Streamweaver as well. But once you've installed it, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Um, it's three Polaroid images that I've constructed and I've put a little bit of a title underneath as well. So all we're going to do is apply some shadows to the whole area. Okay, so it's well worth the download um, just to see how I constructed the um, web page itself. So let's preview this in Firefox. And the first thing we're going to do is add a box shadow to the title area here. And I'm going to show you a few techniques that we can use to accomplish that. Okay, so I'm going back in Streamweaver now. I'm going to split the screen to show the code. And if you scroll through the code, you'll see there's, there's quite a bit of code in there. Lots of floating, lots of um, paddings and margins. But if we click on the title area itself, we can see that it has an ID of title and it is a div. And we can also see it just below the screen there. It will say div pound title. So that's where we need to target. So if you click inside the CSS and then click here in the CSS styles panel for pound title, that will expose that rule so we can adjust it. For those of you who watched my previous video on CSS curved corners or rounded corners, I'll put a link in the below bar. Uh, we had two different prefixes, the Moz prefix and we had the WebKit. So first we're going to do the uh, Moz prefix for Firefox, which is dash Moz, dash box, dash shadow, colon. Now this bit's important. The first figure is the horizontal offset. The second figure is the vertical offset and the last figure, the five pixels, is the blur radius. And then we have to put in a color. So I'll put in pound zero 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 to give us a black shadow. Okay, now the WebKit prefix is typed like this. Now the thing to remember is that if it's a positive number, 15 pixels, it will appear on the right, so the horizontal offset. For the vertical offset, positive number, it will appear below. So it will be below and right. And there you go. So the box shadow is below 15 pixels, it's to the right 15 pixels, and it has a blur radius of 5 pixels. Now, if you didn't put the blur radius, it would just be a solid block of color. Now, I've just changed the horizontal and vertical to 9 pixels, and you can see it's a smaller shadow, but we've still got the same 5 pixel blur radius. Okay, now back in Dreamweaver, I'll just change the color of the shadow as well to show that you can change it and I'll make it pound 999, nice sort of gray, subtle gray color and there you can see that the shadow has appeared. Now if we put negative figures in, as in minus figures, so if I put in here nine, minus 9 pixels, um, it will have the opposite effect. So whereas the shadow appeared on the right, it will now appear on the left. And for the vertical offset, instead of appearing below, it will appear on top. So let's have a look at that. And there you go. So we're at top left now. Okay, so if we change the horizontal offset and we make it a non-minus figure, so we make it a positive 9 pixels, then you'll see in Firefox that it will appear on the right hand side. Okay, so when you download the, the um, tutorial files, I'll leave full instructions below the web page to show you exactly all the different combinations you can use there. Now I've just changed the blur radius to zero, so you can see that it will just be one block of color, so it won't look too gray, so you'll need to add a blur radius to it. And the good thing about the blur radius is you can sort of go from zero all the way up to like 100 and 
120 pixels. So if you if I set it to 90 pixels now, you'll see what it looks like. And it looks quite a good, you can make quite a good effect using it. Okay, so that's some of the things you can do using the new box shadow attributes. Okay, so I'm just going to reset that back to the way it was. So 5 pixels blur radius. And uh, now we're going to have a look at the Polaroids that I've made with the three pictures below. Each one of them's got a title in it and it's enclosed in one big wrapper div. So what we'll do is we'll apply the box shadow to the wrapper div. And in this occasion it's div IMG holder. So if we target the IMG holder which holds and wraps around all of it, we can um, make the box shadows work. So we'll click inside the CSS, then we'll click on IMG holder and we'll add the same attribute. So dash moz, dash box, dash shadow, colon. And I'll give it a positive horizontal and vertical, um, eight pixels. And that's gonna appear below and to the right. And we'll give it a five pixel blur radius as well. And I'll just add, add the WebKit prefix to Okay, so let's not forget to put the colours in as well. So just after, just before the colon, we'll put in pound zero zero zero, and we'll do the same with the WebKit prefix as well. Now you can render the WebKit one differently for Chrome and for Safari. You just change the figures. Okay, let's preview this in Firefox. Okay, and this is CSS free rendered box shadows. So no images involved at all. This is such a time saver. It's ridiculous. And you can change the shadow to whatever color you want. So if I change the Mozilla one to a sort of nice sort of blue color, and we'll see how that renders now. Okay, so there you go. You can change the uh, color of the box shadow. You can change the horizontal and vertical offsets, and you can also change the blur radius. And uh, I'm going to do that now actually. Let's, I'll show you a little thing that you can do. If we change these both to 0 pixels and we'll bump up the blur radius to 90 pixels, it creates a pretty good effect. So you've just got to really experiment with these new attributes. There you go. Okay, so I think that looks really, really cool. Um, now, just to show you the difference in rendering, if we have a look at the Safari one and see how that renders, I'll change that to the same, exact same prefix, 0 pixels, 0 pixels, and 90 pixels of blur radius with the same color, you'll see that it renders differently. So I'll just press refresh, and there you go, look. Um, the the Firefox one was a lot more smudged. It, was, it seemed to encompass a more of a blur radius, and this is the Safari version, which is much tighter. So there you go, there's the Firefox version. So you need to make sure you remember that while you're creating your web designs and rendering out. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe.